doing is not working. Why? This is stupid. Ugh, come on. Jesus. What's wrong? Who would ever come up with this stupid thing? Well, it all started with Sputnik and us not wanting to fall behind the USSR. We were afraid the USSR was going to attack us using a satellite, so we developed the distant early warning line to defend against Soviet attack. So President Eisenhower established ARPA, which stands for Advanced Research Projects Agency, for space research. So we have to give some credit to the Soviets for developing the Internet. But who actually came up with this? Well, the original pioneer was J.C. Licklider. He actually saw the network as a way to communicate between far places in a short amount of time. His ideas foretold of graphical computing, point-and-click interfaces, digital libraries, e-commerce, online baking, software that would exist on a network and migrate wherever it was needed. How could someone come up with this all by themselves? Well, Bob Taylor worked with the Glider at ARPA, and he got funding for the project. But all the funding in the world doesn't make a project. That's right. So one of the first things Bob Taylor did was hire Larry Roberts. Roberts developed the specifications for the IMP, or the Interface Message Processor, and because the original networking ideas were shot down at the Ann Arbor meeting. After Roberts came up with the idea for the IMP, the Gatlinburg meeting was a success, and Douglas Engelbert gave his support to the ARPANET. Okay, who built it? Bolt Baranek Newman, or BBN, was awarded the contract for the IMP, and Licklera had joined that company in 1957. BBN got into the computer business when they bought a PDP-1 in 1958. Then BBN hired Frank Hart, who made a team to develop the proposal for the IMP, which was accepted by ARPA. The proposal modified the Honeywell DDP-516 to form the IMP. So how does the network work? Well, Paul Baran developed the concept of packet switching, which is a way to make data into smaller chunks and send it between nodes, and then combine the chunks into the original messages. The term packet switching was coined by Donald Davies, who did the same type of work as Baran. Oh, I have to go. Um, I'll, I'll see you later. Bye. Yeah. Hi, what's wrong? Well, I was still having problems understanding the internet. So how did BBN build the first app? So after BBN got the IMP contract from Apple, had uh, organized a team working on building the first IMP. Uh, they worked hard from New Year to Labor Day in 1969, and the team built an interface between host and the IMP. What kinds of problems did they meet in building the first IMP? Uh, the, the prototype of IMP uh, didn't work at first time because uh, Honeywell didn't implement the design well. So IMP guys spent months debugging the machine, and at last it worked. After they fixed the problem, they found centralizer bugs, which may cause IMP crash. IMP guys fixed this problem just, because, just before the day the first IMP shipped. How do different computers communicate in a network? Uh, different computers communicate with the same protocol. A group named Network Working Group was found in 1968. It started writing requests for comments and also described layer protocol. How was the first real network built? So after September 1969, IMP guys started installing one IMP every month, and by the end of the year, they had a total of four IMPs. They discovered that congestive failure could happen because of high traffic, but in that size, the network worked success successfully. How did the network change as it grew? The network grew quickly, and uh, important improvements were made during the process. Telnet protocol and the FTP protocol are made. New IMP were made, called Terminal IMP, and the congestion control was improved. How did the network attract new users, though? Uh, first, international Conference on Computer Communication was held in Washington in 1972 and uh, attracted new users. It was a live interactive dem demonstration of everything network could do and it was a great success. By that time, the biggest success was email. Hey, Matt has new pictures of Brittany. Oh, that's great. 
So, how are you doing now? <laughs> well, I did have one question. Where did email come from? Well, it wasn't really planned. It just kind of happened starting in 1972 and growing into what we know today by 1980. Ray Tomlinson at BBN sent the first message across machines in 1972, and he was also responsible for the at sign in all email addresses. By 1973, three quarters of all traffic on the ARPANET was email. How did it develop into what we know today? Well, this was a big issue throughout the 70s, especially in an informal mailing group called Message Group. Most of the issues were about how much information should be required in an email header, so these discussions were called the header wars. Different operating systems across the ARPANET created more problems, and a few RFCs attempting to decree a solution helped make matters worse. By 1980 or so, however, most of the issues worked themselves out, and people settled on a header format that seemed to work. Was ARPANET the only network? No, there were many more. It was just the first and the biggest. That's why Vint Cerf and Bob Can came up with the TCP protocol in 1974. By 1978, they had split it into the current TCP IP, and the ARPANET officially transferred to it in 1983, at the same time as it transitioned to the current Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, or SMTP. Is ARPANET still around today? No, as it grew to include non-computer users in the 70s, it started to bother people that it was run by the Department of Defense. So, in the 1980s, the National Science Foundation, or NSF, created NSFNet as another backbone in America for what was then becoming known as the Internet. By 1989, the ARPANET was officially dismantled and all sites were moved onto the NSFNet, allowing them to stay part of the Internet. Well, I thank you for your help, and I appreciate your time. All right. Thanks. Thanks for taking time to uh, watch our review of Where Wizards Stay Up Late. I'm Chris, this is Pan, this is Scott, we'll see you guys later.